Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now up 14, NASDAQ up 8, S&P's up 1.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter. Now, you can get this newsletter by coming over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You're going to see the opening call. Our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, uh, bottom line, sends it out every trading day. You can subscribe to it. Basil's newsletter is $128 for one month. You can get it for six months for $595, which is $173 savings. You can get it for a year for $995, which is a $541 savings. Now, in all those cases, folks, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Check it out right on the front page of TFNN as you hit newsletters. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I saw some of those pictures of a lot of that snow you got. That was a big storm, but you know what's interesting about it? It was very, once it's cleared up, because it's so cold, we don't have um, have it melting and having ice all over. It's the ice I worry about. Oh, no, yeah. So was it that soft snow you can move like real real easy? It was, but it was a lot. It was okay, at least cool. 14 inches, yeah. That's a lot, man. That's yeah, a lot. For us it is. I mean, we're not talking Denver here. We're talking no. Boston, so 14 inches You're is a lot. You're talking March 5th, too, of, I guess. Yeah, talking, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm looking at the Dow Industrials here. So when we spoke last time, last week, Thursday, I said that I believe we're now going to go into a very choppy phase and that there's a particular, and I spent some time in my uh, noon hour uh, show to discuss this very narrow up channel that can go for quite a while. What happens when it breaks down uh, the uptrend support level and breaks down below it? And you can see I've got this pink line and what I've done for subscribers, I've drawn this. In fact, I was doing it on the show for quite a while, uh, almost every day for the past week and a little bit. I've been showing you a pattern that I said, if I'm correct, this is what we should do. The way you get out of this very long channel is to have a move down, a rally higher. So you can see this little dash line I drew in. Then I drew another dash line that went to just above the previous high. It was the uh, recovery high of 26,241 on the 25th of February for the Dow, and then a sharper decline that says you should go below the, the trough that was made on the left side, then have another rally, and then the next decline is the one that really starts to break away from that up channel to make that support. Now, a res resistance line, number one, and number two is it's this big, well, I always think of you know how a dog gets, when it's at the water's edge, it gets all wet, and then it comes away, and then it shakes itself, and everybody yeah. gets soaked, and the dog is just standing still, <laughs> doesn't move, and then it just kind of casually walks away, and everybody's yeah. soaked. Well, that's, this is this kind of thing. And what happened yesterday, um, so for, for subscribers, whenever we get to a certain point, we usually start to put on short positions. And in this case, we had a short position. And yesterday, the Dow dropped 400, over 400 points. Actually, it was over 500 points from the high to the low yesterday, but then it rebounded. But that rebound created a candle that I've spoken about over the years. It's something that I, I discovered years ago. I call it the Chapman Wave Roman candle. And it has a tiny little wick. And it has a long leg down. It's a very red candle, and it occurs always right near the, near the highs. And you can see that we've had that. This is the candle that we saw back in February of last year. I'm showing it on the right side. With a monthly chart. Okay. Well, what happens is if the price very quickly after that, within this is a daily chart, so within two days, if there is a break to the downside, if it holds for a shorter period of time, so we're talking about a daily chart, my, my impression was that if it could hold for over two hours underneath 20, right here, 20, 25, 7, 10. That would indicate a really quick uh, uh, slide to the low of 25,611. Well, this morning we we ran down and we stopped right at 20. Uh, there it is, 25,725. So we managed to recover. We got a little doji candle here, but my impression is that we've started that big shaking uh, out of the very long-term up channel, and that is says now expect a lot more volatility even though today is a very quiet and passive day i'm expecting quite a lot of volatility in terms of highs and lows but i'm also expecting there's a really good chance that we start to get lower highs and lower lows at least for the shorter term meaning a couple of weeks that's my impression but we first 
the next step is important. We have to close under 25,600. So for subscribers, we've started to take uh, some profits. We, we're actually raising a little cash. We still have some core positions. We still have our, our uh, Bank of America, which was had for quite a while. Let me just make this a little narrow. You can see it's, it's holding very nicely towards the upper end of the range. It hasn't really broken out, so it looks like it's kind of stuck in a range for now, but it's, it's still doing okay. And then one that we've had for quite some time is MJ, which is the alternative harvest ETF for the cannabis sector. It's taken a long time to get back to the previous high of 38.36 on the 4th of February. My suspicion is, just like Bank of America, we're sort of stuck in a, a rectangle trading range here, but then we're also trying to raise positions. Now, I also spoke to you about the chance that maybe we're looking at wheat and uh, some of the, the softer grains starting to make some kind of a low. Well, it went lower, but look, wheat, oops, all of a sudden, wheat is starting to make a little bit of a turnaround. Nice candle today after the low of three days ago. Um, uh, corn is the next one I'm looking at. Also, not a bad candle. So I'm just thinking that there's a chance in this particular phase where we start to see money flow into some of the other areas. This is a very good time. There's been spectacular profits on a percentage basis on many of the stocks that made lows uh, back in December 24th and 26th. And I think money might come out of that and look for a new home. So I'm thinking that there are some areas that might be favored right now. And then in the next uh, three to four sessions, I think we'll get a good clue on that. So I'm kind of cautious right here. Um, the big picture still says all-time highs in 2019, but at the same time, I think we're, this, is a, this is an important hiatus. I, I, I hope it is because there's some stocks that kind of got away from us, and I'd really like to get into them. And uh, so, so we've got our eye out to do some buying on any sharp declines. Yeah, so, I mean, I know you like using that nine period. I mean, this is the first time in the yes. nine period we got on the opposite side of it since January it? 3rd. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's quite incredible. Um, and, and most important, I, I also just wanted to mention to you, you know, the dollar is still acting quite well, considering. So yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's putting up a fight. There's no doubt it about is that, man. It's putting up a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I, I'm, I've got a feeling we're talking about two separate things. I think the dollar is one aspect. I think gold is another. And I think yields, I've been talking about yields with subscribers for at least a couple of weeks now. If you look at the TNX, I, I know that you, you're thinking that the TNX... Uh, that the TLT should rally and yields should come down. But I'm kind of impressed that the they've held at this higher level for now. So I'm watching them very closely because the Fed would like to have some inflation. If, if the yields can do it for them without them officially announcing that they're raising rates, I think that'll suit them well. And uh, so this is, a, this is a very interesting time because I'm looking at it as if there are three or four different actions that are taking place. One is the dollar, one is the gold, one is yields, and then the other is which stocks have really rallied strongly, need a break, which stocks should come on to take their place in the next couple of weeks. And folks, the way you get his newsletter, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters, you're going to see the opening call, get it for a month, six months, a year, all with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Basil, you have a safe one, a great one, stay warm, and stay out of that snow, man. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.